So for this video, I am going to take a game that I played on stream where there were a lot of chaos, I managed to get a lot of kills, but I'm going to go through my thought process and I want you guys also to be able to do this. When it comes to learning how to recognize gank opportunities, it all starts from draft. Already from the draft, I am talking about whether what our win condition will be and how the lanes will look like. It's also important to recognize which lanes have CC. So if they have any crowd control, any stuns, any hooks, any sort of interruption for the enemy, that's going to make it a lot easier to pull off ganks. So I would have loved to have a Nautilus on my team because Nautilus is really nice to gank because he has a hook, he has an ultimate that will knock people up and it will be very easy for me to gank that lane because of Nautilus kit. Now I know that I have an Ash Jin bot lane. And Ash Jin in general are two squishy motherfuckers that will just die a million times unless they get assistance. So already from the draft I know that I have to play around bot this game, otherwise it's gonna be quite a difficult game. If Nautilus gets ahead and Varus gets ahead, I'm probably not gonna be able to do much this game. My ultimate goal this game is to make sure that my bot lane will not die too many times, and if enemy bot lane plays way too aggressive to look to punish my bot lane, I am going to be there to punish them, and hopefully collect some kills. And I say during the stream that, since I'm the only AP, I am the going to be the one that needs to take the kills this game. So I am actively going to try to kill steal this game because if I don't get ahead, we're gonna lack a lot of AP damage. And that might actually be a way to lose the game. If the enemy team would just decide to build full armor, then it might be a little bit difficult for us to win the game. Now it comes down to matchups. So right now I have Jin Ash versus Varus Nautilus. Jin Ash can generally be fine, but if Nautilus lands a hook, it's going to be a very rough lane, so Nautilus and Varus have to play quite aggressive to get an advantage. Varus Nautilus is an active lane. An active lane is a lane that's looking to play aggressive and will overstep. And in order to recognize this, this usually happens when you see a melee support versus a range support, and the melee support only option is to go in. So already there, you know that you will have ganking opportunities around bot side. Now with perfect play of course, their jungler is also going to be bot side to look to cover, but it's solo queue, so people are going to make mistakes and they're going to play 2v2 and they're going to blame it on jungle diff if I'm there first. But Doris versus Anivia, realistically there's probably not going to be that many gank opportunities, but I do know that Ola versus Camille, there's probably going to be a fist fight. So the reason I'm trying to emphasize about you knowing the matchups is because you will know how the lane will play out, and if you know how the lane will play out, then you know where the action will be, which means that you will be able to find the kills. So I already know from the beginning that Olaf will be trading a lot with Camille, so there might actually be a potential dive opportunity or even just a gank. And I also know that enemy bot lane is gonna look to play aggressive and there might be a lot of trading. So there is also a new opportunity. Now, let's forget about this draft. I know that you probably don't know all the matchups, and I don't expect you to. I will show you as well how to just do it in game without actually knowing the matchups. Because the thing is, at the end of the day, even though I know all the matchups, how they should play out, it's solo queue. Nothing plays out as you think it will. And that's why you also need to be very adaptable when you play solo queue. You need to make sure that you're not falling in love with the plan. What I mean by that is that you think, oh, my top lane should be trading and he should be winning, he has a winning matchup. And if that doesn't happen, then boom, your plan is completely fucked. You can't do anything, you just lost the game. You can't let that happen. You need to be adaptable. At the same time as I'm saying all these matchups, I'm expecting them to go completely opposite. I'm expecting my bot lane to like randomly 2v2 kill them, level 1. I don't know what's gonna happen in game. And that's why... I just have a general idea of what I think is going to happen in the game, just to start off my game. So at least I will know now, hey, I want to path bot because there might be ganking opportunities there. And then, let's say I finish my red buff, my bot lane is already dead. And I might be like, well, maybe it's better if I play around top, he might have a better chance to carry. So you need to be a little bit more adaptable when you look at the game and not fall in love with your plan. Do not stick to one plan no matter what. Make sure that you're a little bit adaptable and don't expect your teammates to play perfect. That just hurts you because you're probably going to be that guy who's like, Well, I can't believe you lost that lane. What the fuck? And my team is so boosted. And then you sit there in fucking silver being sitting on Reddit complaining. What the fuck, man? Come on, do better. So yeah, 
I want to ensure that that doesn't happen to you. So <laughs> let's uh, now that we've assessed the draft and we know what's going to happen, let's see how the game actually plays out and how we adapt to it. Now, since I'm playing Silas this game, I am going to prioritize activity over farming. Because Silas clear is pretty terrible and if I would just be full clearing over and over again, most likely I'm gonna fall behind because enemy jungler clears a lot faster. So I want to prioritize looking for things and I'm just gonna do three camps and then I'm gonna look for some opportunities, maybe gank mid, maybe gank top. And that should be the general mindset when you're playing champs like Jarvan, Elise, whatever champ can it be, Elise Sin even. Now as I'm doing my raptors, I'm making sure I'm keeping an eye on the minimap to see what's going on in the game. And trying to look at the lanes helps me get the information necessary to know if it actually is gankable. Because at the end of the day, if you're not looking at the lanes or looking at the minimap, you're not going to be able to have the information good enough to know if it's actually gankable. So that is probably one of the first steps. Now of course, you might not be able to just look at all the lanes all the time, but just being able to look at the minimap will give you enough information to know if it's gankable. Now, I understand there are some players who might just look at the lanes, but they don't understand what's going on. And I'm going to try to explain to you what you're actually looking for when you are looking at the minimap or looking at the lane. Now, one of the instances, you want to check how far up is the wave pushed up. Now, if the lane has passed this line and the minions are going up here, then the laner has to walk up a little bit further, which means that you might actually be able to come around and look for a gank. Because... If he's at his tower and the wave is almost at his tower, you're probably not going to dive him, especially if he's full HP. Now the second thing you want to look for is how healthy is the enemy laner and how healthy is yours. Now if you're able to see, let's say this Anivia would be like full HP, right? Excuse my drawing, I just started using EpiPen so I have no idea what I'm doing. But if he's full HP, you can already know that you're probably not going to be able to catch up with him. Now in this lane, Darius, how is he going to get in range of the Anivia? So, that's not a good idea. It's not gankable. Now, this also works with the minion waves to look at the other lanes. Now, if it passes through here, or here, like I pointed out before, or even here. Because the second they've actually pushed up above that line, means that they're starting to get into your territory, your side of the map. Which means that they have overextended, and now is a good opportunity to gank them. Now, another thing you also want to pay close attention to is how big is the minion wave. Now, if the minion wave is like three waves stacked up here, that's like two extra champions that are about to attack you when you're going into a gank in the early game. Minions deal extremely high damage in the early game, and you do not want to look for a gank when it's way too big of a minion wave. So it's important you also pay attention to that, and not just mindlessly walk into a lane and be like, whoa, the wave is pushed up and it's about to crash the turret, but it's like three minion waves, your laners are like level one to level three, and you're like, well, this gank should work. So, pay a little bit more attention to that, and do not force ganks. Now that I've looked at the lanes, I'm able to get the information needed to make up my decision. And this is how you need to make decisions in the game. You cannot just run to a lane hoping that it's gankable, and then once you get there you're like, well, that wasn't gankable, and then you just waste a lot of time. You want to look at the lanes in advance, and that's why I recommend you look at the lanes while you're doing the camps, because that's when... I mean, let's be real, you probably don't need a locked camera on your camp and then making sure you auto-attack exactly perfectly. You can probably throw out your spells and just let your champion auto-attack while you look at the lanes. And this will increase your game knowledge and everything, and your understanding of what is going on in the game at the same time, without losing too much time as well. And now I'm gonna end up looking top lane. Now we look at the criteria needed to look for a gank. The Camille is relatively low. My Olaf has to push, and he's gonna be able to crash this wave, which means we are going to be able to dive him. And both me and Olaf should generally have enough damage to kill the Camille. Now, remember what I said about solo queue in general, how things don't always go as planned. My Olaf, unfortunately, doesn't decide to just focus the minion wave and push it in. He decides to go for a random trade here and walk up instead of prioritizing killing the cannon and make sure the wave crashes so we can make this dive happen as soon as possible. Because this happens, I'm gonna have to pull out the pull the wave, and now the dive has become a little bit more riskier, but I'm still gonna go for it because I've wasted a lot of time. Camille doesn't play that well, she doesn't flash my E, and we end up trading one for one kill. Now comes the second part. Now, if you want to look for ganks, it's not always about offensiveness and looking at the waves and then trying to find where you can gank all the time. It's also about understanding what the enemy jungler can do once you've made a play. 
So if you go top and gank, you need to expect that the enemy jungler is also not AFK and just rolling his thumbs and being completely useless, he's also going to look for a play. And you need to be able to look at this and prepare it in advance to know what your next step will be. Now this is where looking at lanes also becomes important again. Because you also need to see what is going on with your own allies. Now if you look at mid, he's relatively chunked, so he might actually be a target for the enemy team as well. So maybe you need to run from base to mid to cover that. But since we see Maokai on a ward here, we know that he's not doing that. And now we can make up our decision, what is our next movement going to be and where can we get more kills? Now I realize that they're going to dive bot lane. I'm unfortunately a little bit late. They're going to end up making a mistake and they're not going to play it perfectly. And my bot lane probably played it pretty well as well. But the idea is that you're making sure that you're running to a lane because you have an idea behind it, because they're about to dive bot lane. As obvious as it looks, you're at least coming in with a plan. Now, this one is a little bit more of an extreme example because you can see them clearly going to dive bot. But let's say you're not paying attention to the minimap. You're not looking at what's happening. And you're just auto pathing to your wolves and you're hoping to just pick up your camps. And then your bot lane gets killed. Now, if I'm just at my wolves right now, I would probably not even be able to catch the kills. So that's why it's important that you look at the minimap to see what's going on with your teammates and also with the enemy team. Because that's going to help you find a lot more gank opportunities as long as you're aware of what is going on in the game. Now, this will be another example of why you're looking at the minimap is very important and how it can actually get you more kills if you're aware of what is going on. Now, in this clip, I'm currently doing blue buff and I see Nautilus on the minimap and if you look closely at my eyes you will see them going to the right every single second because I'm constantly looking at the minimap as I'm doing the blue buff and this helps me pull down the camp to make sure that I'll be closer to Darius in case a fight breaks out. And like I said before, if you're close to the action, you're probably gonna end up getting a lot more kills. We end up killing the Anivia, luckily, and now we need to look at the information that we have. Now we know that bot lane does not have any flashes because they dove before. And we also know that Camilla has no flash because we dove her earlier. And now we also know that Anivia has no flash. I'm going to show you in the next few minutes how to punish someone who does not have flash. Now as I'm doing the raptors, I'm initially I want to go to base because I'm relatively low. But I noticed that Anivia has pushed up because I'm looking at the minimap and because I'm looking at the lane. And I see that Anivia used all her spells and she has no more escape. So this is going to be a very easy kill to catch and she has no flash as well. And this is a part where you have to be adaptable as well. Because in another world I might just base and be like, well I'm going back to base. And that can be honestly an okay choice. Anivia shouldn't be walking up. Because I've played the game so long, I also know that the best time to gank someone is when they just return to lane because that's usually the time that they want to play aggressive again and get control of their lane and poke the enemy turret and poke the enemy laner and you can also think for yourself if you were a Nivea right now you just got killed and you're coming back to lane the Darius has overstayed and he's low under his turret what would you want to do you want to of course push that advantage and play aggressive you want to overstep you want to push your advantage if you're aware of this and know that she's probably going to do that, then you can look to punish it. So here I'm going to see that my Ash is actually on the way, so I'm going to ping her to come mid. And we can get a kill, because I know that Anivia has no flash. So try to keep, pay attention to what summoners the enemy team has in order to make your call of whether a gank can work or whether it can't. And now I just based and I finished my night harvest and I'm looking at the lanes right now and I'm seeing on the minimap my Olaf is relatively low. I think that Maokai is around both sides. I don't want to fight until I get my ulti. Now we just play this clip and show you what happens and how my thought process is when I'm looking for this gank. Maybe next wave I can look mid. Or this wave. I mean he's playing aggressive, I think I will just go mid here. But if he's playing at his turret then there's not much we can do, right? I'll try to go behind him. He still has wall though. Okay, he's walking up to me. Now in that clip you can see that my initial plan was just to farm up my camps and then go to bot lane. But as I see that Anivia is stepping up a little bit too far, I realize that this might be a new ganking opportunity and I really want to punish her because she doesn't have flash. Let's go back here. Let's say you're the average Joe in solo queue and you're not really looking what is going on. The thing is, I want to give you 
a perfect tip where you can be as lazy as you want and not look at the lanes and also still find the kills. But sadly, if you want to be able to find more gank opportunities, you just have to look more at the minimap and look at the other lanes, what is going on. Because if you don't have the information, it's going to be very hard for you to make a judgment call. It's almost like you have an exam coming up on Tuesday, but you don't want to study, but you also want to pass it. You know, it doesn't work. You have to put in some effort in order to actually see some progress and get the things that you want. And that's generally how life works in general. You have to put in some work if you want to get a result. I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to look at lanes and you're gonna have to start looking at the minimap and then make up your decision. Now, of course, this is gonna take a little bit of time to getting used to looking at the minimap and then looking at the lanes. You can just start by looking at the minimap and then later on start trying to move your camera and slowly by slowly. So before you gank, don't just auto path to mid lane or auto path to the lane you're going to. Okay, let's say I would instantly go and I don't want to waste time. Anivia most likely would spot me around this area and she would already start walking back and the gank would have failed. Now a better thing to do is to make sure you're looking at mid lane and see the second she steps over this line, that's probably when you're gonna be in range to kill her. Ganking also takes a lot of patience and you cannot just run into a lane and then wonder why it failed. You need to make sure you're stepping up at the right moment in order to make sure the gank will be successful. Now this will be another example where I'm looking for a kill on Camille. I notice that my ultimate is not up yet so I tell my laner wait for my ultimate because so, I know I can steal Camille ulti and if I steal it then she's gonna have no escape. Now maybe you normally would just jump out instantly and try to run at the Camille but realistically she's gonna use her E and she's gonna get away. So you want to have a little bit of patience and wait for her to step closer to this area where I know that I can use my E and then instantly take the ulti and she's probably not going to get away from that. So being patient is also a huge part about whether your ganks will be successful or not. And also I can't emphasize how important pings are. Make sure that you're pinging when you're going for a gank and make sure that your laners are also aware of what you want to do and when you want to do it. So you don't just run to a lane because a lot of times people are not even looking at the minimap. So you have to start pinging and making sure that they're aware that you're coming and you're looking for a gank so they can set it up and follow up. I see a lot of times people just run into a lane and then they try to gank and then they're mad that their laner wasn't aware about it. But most players are not looking at the minimap. They're focused on laning, they're focused on CSing and you as a jungler might have it a little bit easier because you're just clearing camps. So I recommend you just ping multiple times, maybe four times. Don't ping too much, just ping on my way, on my way, on my way. And then you move up and that will probably get a response out of your laner nine out of 10 times. Now there are a lot more concepts to ganking and other things that you probably need to know, but I think that's a little bit more advanced. I just want you guys to understand the basics of when you're looking for a gank and what habits you need to have in order to pull off a successful gank. And I hope this video helped you. I don't want to make this video too long. I just want to get you guys over the basics, not to... Um... There are a lot more concepts to ganking, and I honestly think if you can just get the habit of starting to look at other lanes, and just, even if you don't understand the information given to you, you will with the time. Maybe you'll start playing and start looking at the lanes, and you'll be like, actually, every time the lane has passed this way and the laner is stepping over here, the gank works 9 out of 10 times. I'm gonna start doing that more often. But first step is always to look at the lanes and trying to understand what is going on. And like they always say, fuck around and see what happens. Try some random ganks that you think might actually work and then see if, they, if you have a higher success with them. Maybe it could be a level 3 gank instantly after doing 3 camps or maybe it could be a, even a level 2 gank. Whatever it is, just fuck around and see what happens. And that is honestly the best way to improve. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Try out some ganks that you think would have worked and then look afterwards why didn't it work and try to understand why it didn't work. And then you can make up your decision the next time it happens again. What's up guys? I hope you enjoyed that video and I really hope that you learned something. And maybe to you it was already obvious and you already knew this. Whether it was obvious or not, I still hope you enjoyed it. And let me know in the comments below if you like this type of content or if I should do something else. I'm open to suggestions and uh, I'm just fucking around and seeing what happens. Have a good day. Now get out of here. I think I can go over here. That's okay. Let's take a break.
Oh, bro! Oh, I'm trying to steal my quadrant? Fuck out of here, bro. 